Hi, my name is William Teo. I'm a counsellor at NEMS. I've been in NEMS for about 20 years, uh, doing counselling uh, with spe uh, specialty in addiction. Yeah, I just want to recall back when, when I was using heroin, you know, uh, I started without knowing that I would become an addict. You know, I became a hungry, angry monster and it's almost impossible to stop because I remember I tried many times and looking back at it, it was really scary. And I know I wake, wake up trembling with cravings, fear, anxiety, because you know, I'm addicted to heroin. Then after about two years later, life you know, became meaningless, no direction. And I, I was also feeling ashamed, especially towards my family. You know, I cheat, I lie, I, you know, I take money, create a lot of issues and problems. So desperately inside me, I wanted to stop. After having spent more than 30 years, you know, battling addiction, going in and out of prison, at least four times, as I remember. So driven by des despair and uh, hopelessness, um, and the desperation that I'm facing, I somehow has to be forced to stop. Getting clean and sober is not just about stop using drugs or not drinking alcohol. It's also about establishing a new lifestyle that can support my recovery. And my challenge was overcoming my, the first thing is the withdrawal, the cravings that I have. And I was gripped by the fear because I have tried many times without success. F starts for forget everything and just relapse or just run. And that's my best way to escape by using drugs. However, you know, as, as I tried many times, uh, even going to prison was something which, you know, have been doing all over again and having the same result, I relapsed. I heard a quote once, uh, it says, you know, you don't expect a different result if you keep doing the same thing in the same way. That, I, however, also didn't convince me, la, but I tried anyway. So the difference for me at that point of time uh, is I have this desperation and desire to seek help. And the difference for me was enrolling as a volunteer into a rehab residential program, which is six months, stay in a halfway house. And when I started the journey in recovery, you know, my priority changed in a way dramatically. I realized I must put my recovery needs above everything else in life. Uh, if I am to stay clean and live a life free of addiction, I need to start at the halfway house. It was both challenging and time consuming, but worth, it, worth the effort. Uh, many people suffer from addiction uh, by using drugs or alcohol to deal with these emotions that they have, whether it's trauma or whether it's shame. And it requires a lot of effort, time and bravery, in fact, to confront all these issues head on and address these deep-seated issues that contribute to the addiction. So for me, at first, as I remember you saying, fear was really shutting me down. Uh, apart from feeling all alone in trying to get well, I struggle with the low self-esteem, social phobia, loneliness, and a belief that people don't trust me. I also had suspicion and doubtful mindset towards others. Now, looking back at my past, I have many negative traits. I was stubborn, unreasonable, in denial, lying, dishonest, rebellious, distrustful, manipulative, easily agitated. Uh, being in an aggressive violence as a way out and not motivated to change. I was also thinking, you know, I'm always right, self-righteousness and being oversensitive, uh, which is also very against authority and structure. So living as an addict has made me become a monster, which, you know, I have to change all that. Having relationship and social network that provide love, support, friendship and hope is an essential part of a life in recovery. I have to be patient, I learn to overcome challenges, issues in recovery and to stop using drugs is easy. 
but to remain abstinent is tough. That means to stay stopped. And to change is not just stopping my drug use, but to adopt a positive attitude with gratitude in order to continue a healthy life. I would like to share some very useful suggestions. First thing, I myself have to accept that I'm an addict and I have an addiction. I have to use uh, honesty, become truthful, and practice this in my life. I've learned to avoid high risk situations, don't go to places that I used to go to, learn how to ask for help. And this is something which I have to learn to be humble and say, hey, counselor, please help me. I call my friends and say, hey, I, I need help. Uh, I got cravings. And there are many pathways to recovery. So each individual has a different pathway. Uh, the most difficult pathway is doing it alone. And one of the most, I think, challenging one for me is to practice saying no. And no matter what, don't use. For me, no matter what happened, don't use. Just don't use the first one. Because the first one will lead you to the second, to the third, and then a thousand will not be enough. Make new recovery friends and bring them into your life and find ways to distract yourself when you have urge or cravings. Relapse is one of the biggest challenges many people with addiction in recovery have to face. Both during and after rehab, craving, stress, anxiety and old acquaintance can be potential threats. Uh, when you are trying to stay sober, you know, even you have stresses and all this, you have to be able to lean on your support system where that is your friends and for me mainly it's my peers and the mentors that I have who will help me get back on my track. So no one is perfect and sometimes it just takes time and you won't fail if you don't give up. Making the transition from a life of addiction to an independent life of sobriety is another challenge you have to face after rehab. For many people in recovery, this transition can be extremely challenging and it may be tempting also to give up and then to use again. That's the word that I use fear, you know, forget everything and relapse. Having a thorough experience and a compassionate team of addiction treatment experts on your side would greatly help in your recovery.